This is Mr. Mega Man Fan. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. You know all the things to do. I recently had a chance to pick up eight new Game Gear games, so I thought I'd go over them in this video, starting with Bugs Bunny in Double Trouble. Now, you may have seen this one previously on an episode of Genesis Does, and if so, you're noticing the gameplay is just the same with the graphics scaled down for what would be a Game Gear screen. And blowing it up on a big HD television probably doesn't do it any favors because it looks even more bit crushed than it would if you were playing it on a small handheld screen. But I'm happy that they managed to convert the gameplay to the Game Gear considering it is more or less a clone of the Sega Master System hardware, which is why there are so many SMS to Game Gear conversions and vice versa. Some people have actually converted Game Gear games to work on the Sega Master System, even though the screen size is a little bit different, color palette can be slightly different, but it's been done. I would just rate that game as okay though. Cool Spot actually enjoyed a little bit more. I feel like the animation is smoother, the platforming is easier to control, the sound effects are nicer. It just feels like an overall better presentation. Now, again, it's an adaptation of a similar Sega Genesis game. But this one just feels overall like a more polished product, whereas the Bugs Bunny one feels like we need a portable version of this. We're just going to get it out any way we can. This one feels like more love and care went into it. You can even clearly tell that's a 7-Up logo on that big coin, despite it being bit crushed. So, good on them. GP Rider, I would rate up near the top of these eight games that I bought. This one was quite enjoyable. I even noticed on one of the selection screens that it had the shop music from Fantasy Zone that... Do 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 If you've played that game a lot, you know that tune well. And you know its prevalence in certain Sega-related games. It has been used more than once. It shows up here and there. So it may not even be the shop music from Fantasy Zone now that I think about it. It may not be the origin point, but that's just where I first learned of it. Anyway, if you're a fan of games like Pole Position, you're really going to enjoy this one. The racing feels very similar to that, and it handles really well. Holly Wars was also a favorite of mine out of these eight games, and I got a little bit of Solar Striker for Game Boy vibes, and to me, that's a good thing. Some people have criticized Solar Striker as being overly simplistic, but it was one of the first Game Boy games that I ever got, and I fell in love with the music and the gameplay, and I never bemoaned the fact that it was overly simplistic compared to other shooters. It felt like the right level of challenge for me, and I feel the same way about Holly Wars. This, to me, might even be a hidden gem, because you don't see it talked about to the same degree that you see shooters on other platforms. In fact, the store owner, when I bought this game, said he hadn't seen that come in for quite a long time. And I believe him because it was the first time I'd ever seen Halley Wars. So maybe look for a ROM of this one and try it for yourself. Especially if you like shooters. I feel like the progression system is really nice here. The power-ups that you get, the fact that you can retain a few of them after you die, it really stands out. The action, the sound, it, you might knock it a little for moving slowly. But again, I think people knock the same thing about Solar Striker, and I didn't mind that at all. By going a little slower, it's actually scrolling quite smoothly on this small handheld type screen. I mean, obviously I'm blowing it up to bigger screens with the Analog Mega SG Game Gear adapter, but I thought it was great. Now, Joe Montana Football, I don't think I need to say too much about this one or play this one for too long. You should know this series pretty well if you are familiar with Sega Genesis commercials because 
Joe Montana football used to feature in them regularly. In fact, I believe it was even one of the games that you could like send in your proof of purchase and they would send you a copy of it. So this is just a Game Gear conversion of that game. If you like Joe Montana football, it's fine. Next up, we have Jungle Book. And even though that's a favorite cartoon slash movie from my childhood, both the uh, Tailspin spinoff of the Jungle Book that aired on afternoon blocks of Disney cartoons and the original movie with the famous song Bear Necessities that I probably drove my parents and my sister insane by singing. I mean, yes, I have a lot of affection for Jungle Book, but I don't feel like this is a good platformer. There are cheap deaths here. Like, how did I not land that jump? It's just, it's too difficult to control. Mortal Kombat was way better than I expected for a handheld version of this game. Now, the animation is choppy as all hell. I'm not going to try to defend the missing animation frames and the way that it looks. And it's probably too easy to win battles, especially compared to normal Mortal Kombat. But I genuinely had fun playing this. Way more fun than I expected a portable handheld version of Mortal Kombat. And if you've played the Game Boy version, the uh, original black and white Mortal Kombat Game Boy version, this is way better not only in how it handles, but how it looks. I recommend Mortal Kombat on Game Gear, and I didn't expect that I would do that. And to wrap it up here, Shinobi was arguably the best of the lot. Now, once again, it's crushed due to the screen size, but the gameplay here is super smooth. The animation is the best they could do with the hardware that's available. I think they got as much out of it as they possibly could, and it's just a delight to play. If you like any of the Shinobi early games, you know, not the modern day remakes, but the classic side scrolling Shinobi platforming games. This one is great. I could not recommend it enough. Even if you paid $20 for a loose copy of this cartridge, which I don't think I did, I paid somewhere like 10, 15 maybe, it'd be worth it. There is going to be a lot of replay value to this one if you love classic shinobi the arcade game the conversions to various home consoles this is a good version check it out